the last 10 seasons, Patrick Ewing has been the man for the New York Knicks. But Patrick knows that to be the man in the NBA, your team must win a title. This season, he's been leading the team by example. Now has Starks for Ewing. Ewing with the spin. Ewing, yes! One eight ten seconds remaining. The Knicks lead by one. Indiana falls. Patrick in better positions to score. Ewing nearly lost the dribble. Here's Starks for Ewing. Off the fade. Yes. So it is a 2 nothing Nick Lee. It looks like Jordan's going to be the top of the key man. And Rodman, an excellent uh, passer, fires on the hop. Picked up by Ewing. Here's Ewing going all the way. One tenth of a second to go. In a city famous for its skyscrapers, Patrick Ewing was a towering figure in New York sports for 15 memorable seasons. The 7-foot, 240-pound center was an absolute force in the NBA. Ewing used a powerful combination of defense, rebounding, shot blocking, and scoring to do battle with formidable opponents inside the paint. Unfortunately, the man doesn't get enough love from the NBA world despite being named as one of the top 75 players of all time. My best guess? Ewing was just playing in one of the greatest eras of basketball, the big man era. So he may have been overshadowed by his peers, and also probably because he never won a championship. But that's the trade-off you make when you come play for the New York Knicks. Jokes aside, Ewing's heart and determination set him apart from his contemporaries. He left a legacy as one of the most consistent and effective centers in basketball history. Let's see what NBA legends have to say about Patrick Ewing. Speaking of fiercest competitors ever, we all know that Shaquille O'Neal is one of the most confident and self-flattering players in the history of the NBA, and with good reason. He was widely known for his force, and is one of the, if not the most dominant players ever. But still, he knew to respect his elders and the greatness of other players. Back in the 90s, the NBA was filled with a bunch of great centers that Shaq would have to battle with. From Akeem Olajuwon, David Robinson, Alonzo Mourning, to Patrick Ewing. But it seems that Ewing stuck in his memory. In 2013, on NBA TV, Shaq showed his respect, got emotional, and even started crying when Patrick Ewing, who was a guest that day, left the set. Shaq then decided to explain why he got so emotional and why he thinks Ewing is an all-time great and should be mentioned in the top five list of sinners. So, you know, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people when they talk about the greats, there Patrick Ewing name never comes up, but I'm putting Patrick Ewing names there in there as one of the greats. You know, he was a great competitor, even though he never even won though, a championship, even but Pat was a great player, great competitor, did a lot, and, you know, I'm putting him as one of the top five centers. If you're just growing up, the basketball legend idolized many different players, including Bill Russell, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Wilt Chamberlain. Out of them all, however, his true inspiration came from Patrick Ewing. In a recent interview, O'Neal explains his love for the former Knicks star. Speaking to the NBA as part of their NBA 75 story series, Shaquille O'Neal recalled Patrick Ewing being the big man who impressed him most as a youngster and the only player to ever intimidate Shaquille O'Neal. Watching Patrick Ewing at Georgetown. Big guy, mean, physical, throwing people around, running the court. And I said, Dad, I want to be like that. He's like, I know, this is why I got you watching the game. So I'm watching Patrick Ewing, he wore number 33, so as I became better, I wanted to be like Patrick Ewing. He was the first guy that, when I played against him, I was actually intimidated. It was truly a beautiful show of respect from one of the greatest players to another great. One of Ewing's closest friends in the NBA was none other than Michael Jordan. Ewing and Jordan knew each other before entering the league. Playing in the 1984 Olympics, both Jordan and Ewing found success in the league, elevating themselves to superstar status. Both players had a massive impact on the game during the 80s and 90s, enough to earn them a spot on the NBA's 50th anniversary team. Ahead of the ceremony in 1997, Michael Jordan, Patrick Ewing, and other NBA players were relaxing backstage. While talking to each other, Jordan sent some friendly barbs the way of Ewing, calling him a black hole, and saying that Dikembe Mutombo was the better center to have come out of Georgetown. Both Jordan and Ewing were laughing throughout, so it was clearly two friends bantering. 
black hole right here. While pointing at Ewing. The best center is Dikembe, come out of Georgetown. <laughs> no, Morning said he was the best. No. Dr. J. Him and Morning, him and Morning are black holes. Jordan and Ewing were friends off the court, with Ewing being a part of MJ's Space Jam movie. You know, the better one. And the two even shared the same agent. But on the court, Ewing and MJ were always battling and trying to get the better of each other. After the Detroit Pistons, the New York Knicks became Jordan and the Bulls' biggest rivals, as they were the only team that could pose a threat to the Bulls in their desire for dominance in the Eastern Conference. Both Patrick's and Michael's former teammate, Charles Oakley, still holds a grudge against Ewing. At first, it was easy to view Charles Oakley as the hero of the story, even though he handled his 2017 ejection from Madison Square Garden like the enforcer he once was for the Knicks. But Oak has now taken multiple unnecessary pot shots at Patrick Ewing, which cannot stand. This is a bittersweet story, because Oakley and Ewing used to stand as faces of the franchise. Ewing was the superstar, Oakley did the dirty work, and together they made the playoffs 10 straight seasons. Over 727 games with the Knicks, Oakley averaged a double-double, 10.4 points, 10 rebounds, and was quite possibly the most consistent partner Ewing ever got to play with, though their one finals appearance resulted in a heartbreaking seven-game defeat. Both Ewing and Oakley performed admirably, with respective per-game averages of 19 points, 12 rebounds, and 4 blocks, and 11 points and 12 boards. Despite their history as two of the fiercest competitors New York has ever seen, in 2020, Oakley turned his dismay with the Dolan situation towards Ewing. Oak has offered multiple blasphemous attacks on Ewing, but let's begin with the freshest wound. In an interview on CBS, Oakley called Ewing high maintenance, saying he wasn't a strong leader, and ludicrously lamented that the big fella held the Knicks back during the 1990s. Because every leader, every superstar in this league, if you don't go through adversity, when you're trying to duck and dodge and you're in the biggest city, they going to damper your team. Oakley said, citing, among other things, Ewing's unwillingness to be accountable with the press to say tough things to officials and coaches when they needed to be said. I mean, I played with Michael Jordan or whatever. So Michael Jordan wasn't like that the first, but he, he installed it in his, in his game. He's seen that if he's going to be getting 30 shots, 30 points, that he got to put his team on his back. And Patrick was, you know, he could never put us on his back like he should have because of any adversity, he ducked away from it. Held the Knicks back? After two seasons of playoff-less basketball upon his selection as the first pick of the 1985 draft, the Knicks proceeded to reach the postseason 13 consecutive times with Ewing on the squad. An 11-time All-Star, Ewing made the All-NBA first team once and was selected to the All-NBA second team six times. He was among the top five MVP vote-getters six times and was in the top 10 for Defensive Player of the Year voting five times. For his career, Ewing put up roughly 21 points, 10 rebounds, and 3 blocks per game. And he averaged 20 or more points 13 straight times with the Knicks, including individual seasons of 28.6 and 26.6. Was Ewing a perfect teammate? Perhaps not. And Oakley would have better insight than a random blogger who was only 10 years old when the Knicks traded Ewing to the Seattle Supersonics. But still, the disrespect was uncalled for. And it's not totally clear why Oakley has decided that he should belittle Ewing's career. In March 2020, Oakley checked in with Knicks Fan TV, used the high maintenance line, and said that Ewing was one of the most difficult guys I ever played with. He's one of the difficult guys I ever, ever played with. I could, you know, he just, uh, he's not a, he's not a, I mean, I played with him 10 years. 10 years? So he should know me, I should know him, something, right? I played 10 years with Patrick, and I mean, I mean, it was hard 10 years because he's, he's, he's not easy to uh, play with, and he's high maintenance. The Knicks still haven't figured out a way to repair the relationship with Oakley, even though it might be as easy as Dolan offering a personal apology for having him viciously booted from the garden, instead of refusing to admit that errors might have been made on both sides. And what do you guys think about Patrick Ewing? Is he one of the top five centers of all time? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more amazing NBA content. Thanks for watching.